Oh my God. What about if that Dr. George guy is the Cleveland torso killer? it's Ellie welcome back to my channel welcome to my channel if this is your first time my name is Ellie Arquette I'm a psychic medium a spiritual life coach and founder of Ellie Arquette cosmetics if you guys are interested in my makeup um, today I actually did uh, this look on my vlog channel if you guys are interested in my makeup and I uh, are interested in hair and makeup and all that go check out my vlog channel beauty and lifestyle vlogs with Ellie. Make sure you guys are subscribed to all my channels. I just, I'm crazy and I just need to do so many different things. I can't just do one thing. Um, so I'm wearing Amber from my 2021 fall lip collection. If you guys are interested, you can go, if you wanna purchase this, it's available. I'm wearing as an, as an eyeliner and on my lips. If you guys are interested, go to elliarquettecosmetics.com. If you guys want to book a session with me, go to elliarquette.com. I do all my sessions on Zoom. And please give this video a thumbs up. It's going to help me out a lot. Subscribe, share, and like. And let's get into today's video. Okay, so I have a co-host today. That's Paris, my little chihuahua. She's a pain in the ass. Sometimes I do my videos like late in the evening and you can just hear her walking around and and she doesn't want me to work after a certain time. It's really funny. I need to like create a channel for her, but I don't have time for that. But if I did, it would be hilarious. She's just like such a personality. Um, anyways, I wanted to do this video right after I did the Black Dahlia because I feel due to... My research that the Cleveland torso killer is probably the person that killed Elizabeth Short Black Dahlia now I don't know this case is unsolved and I'm, re I'm the reason I'm sitting here today is because I'm not gonna do a reading about this it's an unsolved and I just kind of want to tell you guys about this it's kind of crazy and how I feel about it, I'm just gonna tell you guys, okay? Like intuitively what I pick up on it, I'm just gonna give you guys a backstory. So grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a snack, and we're gonna get into it today. And I was just thinking before I started this video and I was like, because a lot of people think like Black Dahlia was killed by this Dr. George Holden or Holder or whatever his name is, the sirens. Um, and I was like, I was thinking, as I was setting up, putting my camera here to do this video, I was like, there is no way that this guy, George, this doctor did this. Like, I feel like the Cleveland um, torso killer is the person that killed Black Dahlia, right? This is like a side note before I start today's video. And then I was like, oh my God, what about if that Dr. George guy is the Cleveland torso killer? So um, I'm gonna get into it and stuff. Anyways, basically I wrote the notes. I wrote I wrote this shit down because this shit is so crazy. There's no way I could like memorize this. It's like literally crazy. So let's get into it. So basically in 1934, September of 1934, a body of a woman was like washed up on shore and it was discovered by some, some people. And so basically it was like a torso of a woman she didn't have any arms and her head was decapitated and she had her legs attached, but from here, from her knees down, they were also decapitated. So this was really crazy. The police, the authorities were called, they came in and they had never seen anything like that. We're talking about like 1930s. Like this is, I think this is around the, uh, what did they call that back in the day? Depression. What is that? Not depression. Am I, what am I talking about? I'm so, Sometimes I, I'm so blonde, like it's like, I'm not really a brunette. I'm really a fucking blonde. What do they call it? The time it was like a depression and people that like, didn't have food to eat. It's called depression, right? Is that, is that what it's called? Alexa, is the 1930s the, the era of depression? 
she didn't hear me. Anyways, I have no one to ask. Anyways, so when they, so when the authorities showed up and they were kind of like trying to like figure out what's wrong, you know, who this person is or whatever, or like what the hell this is, like they're investigating the body and they noticed right away that her skin looked strange and really red. It was almost like she was exposed to like some sort of like a chemical. So that was really interesting. The whole thing was like, they've never seen anything like that before, right? I have to say my orange lipstick is everything. So before I sell out, you guys go get it. I have it as eyeliner. I look like a cat bitch. And anyways, I just got distracted by seeing myself on camera. But anyways, back to the story, I'm fucking insane. So the authorities look around, blah, 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 blah. They found the rest of her body, like they found the, the rest of her leg, like from her, sh from her knee down, her, her legs were decapitated, her head was decapitated, and her arms were decapita decapitated. Now, they, they found, like it was like scattered everywhere by this lake. Did I tell you guys where it was? So her body was like at this Lake Erie or whatever it's called in Cleveland, Ohio. But the authorities never found the head. Now, what I just said when they couldn't find the head is going to become the uh, the highlight of this video. When authorities and the police sh find these bodies, they can't find the fucking head, okay? So after that, blah, 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 the, another crazy thing, okay, this is another theory that I have. So the authorities couldn't identify this person. Like they took her to the morgue, the coroner's office, they're doing an autopsy, they do a fingerprint thingy. They can't find out who this is. Um, I think that they had the technology to do fingerprints, right? And figure out like who this person is or dental record and things like that. Oh, oh my God, I just figured it out, Gus. I'm so blonde. The reason they couldn't identify the bodies of like who it belonged to because they had no face and there was no dental record. Like, you know how they said Brian Laundrie's dental record? That was bullshit, you guys. I wonder if he's still alive somewhere. Yeah, so there was no dental record. So I guess they couldn't really identify. And I guess something had happened to their skin due to being exposed to a specific type of a chemical where it wasn't identifiable. Because I was like, how come the authorities can't identify these bodies? So anyways, they can't identify this body. So the case goes cold. Okay, so two years later, there's two more bodies that are found in an identical way. So September of 1935, these, there's a couple of teenagers walking around or whatever. And this area that these bodies were being found was like not a really nice area. There was a lot of like trash and garbage. And, and it was around that time of depression. Is, is it called depression, you guys? I don't know what it's called. What is it called back in the 30s when they didn't have food to eat and stuff? It was called depression, right? Depression? I literally can't remember. God, I'm like, I'm really intelligent, but sometimes I feel so blonde. Anyways, so this area where the bodies were being found, it was like a really bad area. It was a lot of like a lot of trash and garbage. Like people uh, were creating like shacks and homes from like garbage and like it was just like really crazy. The people didn't have any money to for food or like shelter and things like that. So it was like a really, really bad area. So these teenagers are like walking around in this area and they find a body. And this body was completely drained of its blood. That's why a lot of people feel like the, whomever the Cleveland torso killer is, is probably the person that killed Black Dahlia. Completely drained of its blood, not, not even a drop of blood at the crime scene cut in half like it's just insane like it's literally it has to be him but was it george was george traveling and doing that and then i don't know you guys i don't know i'm just saying it just sounds kind of weird right so, so the authorities show up you know the, the the teenagers run to the cops and they're like we found this body so the so um the authorities show up and they're like holy shit there's another body now this time of course the head was cut off but also the guy's ding dong was cut off. So no head, no head, like literally head, head, you get it? So that was cut off and there was no blood. There was not even like a drop of blood and that, and again, they were not, a, oh, I don't know if they identify it. Let me see. Okay, so there was no head, there was no ding dong. And after the autopsy, 
um they did an autopsy on this person and they were managed to they managed to figure out that it's like a 28 year old young guy and they're they're beginning to say the cause of death is decapitation like the reason these people died is because they were decapitated while they were alive and then they died so it wasn't like this person was killing them and then decapitating them and cutting their arms arms and legs he was just straight up like decapitating them okay i'm sure this video is going to go under review you guys that's what's been happening to me lately like I think the title, whatever that I put up, and I try to not put any photos or videos or anything because if I do that, then, then YouTube is gonna be like, no bitch, you can't publish this video. And I'm like, I'm smarter than you, bitch. I'm not gonna put any videos or photos. Go ahead and try me. Go ahead and try me. Go ahead and review this video. Nothing, you got nothing. Anyways, um, they're like, holy shit, we have another body. Now this time, the guy's, head is gone the guy's ding dong is gone no blood but they were able to identify him as like a 28 year old guy blah 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 whatever his name is but um they're beginning to realize like the coroner is begin beginning to realize that holy shit they're dying from like decapitation that's why they're dying so the authorities look around and stuff and they found they found the rest of like this guy's body again they never they never found his his head or his ding dong so the head and the ding dong is probably in someone's basement you know in a glass drawer or something i don't know these people are fucking nuts people are fucking nuts this guy was fucking nuts so this guy that they found with the ding dong missing they were not able to identify and at this point the authorities are like okay we have a serial killer on our hands in our town and they're beginning to see a pattern no heads you know, sometimes their legs are attached. Sometimes their legs are not attached. Sometimes, you know, their arms are attached. Sometimes their arms are not attached. But definitely, as I bit my tongue, definitely the head was gone. Like, it reminds me of the Headless Horseman. Have you guys seen that movie with Johnny Depp and Christopher Walken, like, obsessed with that movie? This reminds me of the Headless Ho Horseman. Like, if you watch that movie, the Headless Horseman is, like, this creature that... This witch like um, conjures him up and he doesn't have a head. So he goes into town looking for heads because he wants a head because his head is being held by this witch in this cave. You have to watch that movie if you haven't seen it. It's called The Headless Horseman. Actually, that's not what it's called. What is it called? The Headless Horseman. What is the movie called? Sleepy Hollow. This, the movie is called Sleepy Ho Hollow. The movie is called Sleepy Hollow and it's about the um, headless horseman. So January of 1936, a woman is like walking around or whatever and she sees like, like a basket, like a couple of baskets or whatever. And it's like, there's something like inside these baskets, like they're all like wrapped in like newspapers or whatever. And so she's curious, she's a curious cat, right? And she's like, what's, what's up? So she opens it and she realizes soon after kind of going through the basket, put the lotion in the basket, I couldn't resist. Um, <laughs> and, this, I don't even know why I'm so giddy about this story. It's so fucking insane. I th this can't be real. Like, this can't be real, but it was, and it is. And um, so as she's going through these baskets and stuff like that, she realizes they're like human parts. So there's like human flesh and human parts. So she obviously calls the authorities. The authorities show up. So the authorities show up and they realize it's actually like a woman's um a woman's a woman's victim that her body was like cut up or whatever and then 10 days later they find the rest of her body parts again they couldn't find this woman's head and then through the autopsy the coroner concluded that yes this death was also due to decapitation like this is how they were dying whomever this was was like decapitating them and they were just like dying so you know, they didn't, they basically, they didn't, they, they couldn't really, they didn't know what to do in this case. Like, they couldn't figure out what this person was doing. Like, why was this person doing, doing this? Like, was this, it almost looked like a science project. Like, is this person like, you know, is this person like cutting people up because like he's going back to his like Frankenstein laboratory and trying to do like a, like a like a research is he researching on human heads like literally what the hell is he doing with these heads 
Um, reminds me of Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy would cut off the heads of these women that he was like raping and killing and then he would take some of their heads back home with him and then he would have like sex with the, he with the heads of these women. You guys, it, this is so demonic to me. Like, I can't even, like, I don't even know what else to say. It doesn't get more demonic than that. So June of 1936, again, a couple of teenagers are, like, walking around or whatever, and they come across, like, like clothes or, like, pair of pants or something like that on the ground, and it seemed like it was stuffed with something, so they're, you know, curious, and they look through. And once they start opening, you know, unwrap the things that were, like, stuffed in these clothes, they find, like, a head and, like, body parts again. Again... These kids, like poor kids, literally they're walk these kids are just like walking around their neighborhood and they keep finding like headless bodies. It's insane. So they call the authorities and the authorities show up again and they're like, okay, we have another body. And then they get to the they take it to the corner, same shit. No, you know, oh, it was like a head. But they couldn't they didn't find the rest of the body. And then fast forward to the police actually finds a body like at the steps of the police station. It's almost like the person that was doing that was like you guys are so dumb. You can't figure out like who's doing this. And I'm gonna show you guys how dumb you are. And I'm gonna leave bodies like at the steps of the police station. That's basically what he did. So he left like a body at, on the steps of this like police station. Again, when once the police um, sees the body on the steps of their like, you know, police station, um, there's no head, the blood is completely drained and yeah, and they were just like, okay, here we go, another another body. The ambulance comes, the body's taken to the to the corner, headless bodies back to back. <laughs> like someone should make a rap song. Headless bodies back to back. Headless bot I, I feel like demonic making I'm not trying to be I'm not I'm not making fun of it, but it's it's almost it's so unreal to me. It's like if you one time you decapitated somebody, if one time you killed somebody, but then to keep doing it is literally fucking insanity. Like what the hell are you doing? That's why I think he was given like the mad butcher nickname or something like that. But really he went by um, uh, the Cleveland torso killer. Okay, so September of 1936, like I said, this area was like really bad or whatever. And a man was like, you know, walking or trying to get to work or something like that. And he like tripped over something and he didn't know what it was. And he looked down, he like tripped over a man's torso. Um, so of course, you know, he freaks out and contacts the authorities. The authorities show up again. There's a headless horseman, headless body laying there, no blood, no head. At this point, like the authorities, like they don't know what the hell is going on. So they start going to like all the different areas in this like area where it was kind of like not like a not not a good area and if there was like a sewer or like a pool or anything like a little you know cave thing like whatever it was they were like really investigating really hardcore they were trying desperately to try to get some clues to try to figure out how to catch this guy and they couldn't find anything they had no clue, they had, didn't have any, they didn't have a suspect, they didn't have a person of interest, they had no idea who this was. February of 1937, a man finds another headless body, another headless horseman. Again, no head, drain of blood. And, you know, at this time, like, really, the police is just, like, literally freaking out. And everyone's freaking out. Like, the public knows there's something up. Like, the media is writing about it. They're, you know, everyone, everyone knows there's something going on, you know. Another, and you know, the, the, the crazy thing about this whole thing is the fact that, that they were not identified. Like, they couldn't ident identify some of these people. So, I don't want to put any pictures here or videos or anything like that. But if you guys, like, Google this, you will see. You will see. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about it because I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube. But like, just like Google this shit and see what you guys see. Just it just reminds me of that that guy where it was like wearing like the skin of like people and stuff like that. Anyways, crazy like that. June of 1937, another body, headless. July of 1937, July of 1937, another body, headless, no blood, no head. It's just like it. it it's like it got worse. Like. It, the guy was kind of doing it and then he just started doing it like a lot more because it seemed like he wasn't getting caught and he was like okay well they don't know who i am they can't catch me and i'm just gonna keep doing what i'm doing april of 1937 um a man found a woman's body again she was cut cut in half 
and I think that it was only the bottom part that was found like she was like missing like a the rest of her body and then the and then the authorities found the rest of her body but again there was no head and there was no blood August of 1937 another body was found it was like the a torso was found no arms no legs um and it was decapitated no head and then another body was found again and again it, it's I don't even know how many bodies I think I, I want to say there were like 10 or 20 bodies that were found and discovered I don't know how many counts I, I really don't know how many bodies like I want to say 10 or, it's just insane like when you reading this information on the Cleveland torso killer it's like every other day there is a headless body a torso of a body like a, just like a torso like no head no arms no legs it's just was this guy trying to figure out how to like you know, make arms for the handicap. Like, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know. It's just insane. Like, I don't want to ever leave my house again. At this point, the police had investigated like 10,000 people. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. They literally had spoken to every single person that lived there, like four or five, 6,000 people. And they've gone through everyone and they couldn't figure out anything. No one saw anything. No one heard anything. No one had any information about this guy. They could not fucking figure this out. And yeah, and it just like continued. Okay, and then on December 21st, 1938, the chief of police received a letter from the Torso killer. Basically in, the, in this letter, he's saying something like, hey, I know that you guys might think like I'm a madman, but this was like a science project. Literally, that's what he says. This was like a science project and like I had to do that. It's okay if, you know, 10 people die with it this way. Science can find the cure to these diseases and things like that. So basically, he's, he's saying that he's like a doctor or a scientist or a researcher and that he did what he did for science. Basically, that's what the letter, he sends this letter December 21st, 1938 to the chief of police. And basically, he says in this letter, you know, you don't have to worry about me anymore because I'm actually, I actually left town. I'm, I've, I'm headed west. I'm gonna to go to California, so you don't have to worry about me coming back, so it's over. Like, the, the bodies, you're not gonna find any more bodies, and I'm done, like, with your town. This is why a lot of people feel like he's the one that killed Elizabeth Short, Black Dahlia. Now, my question to you guys is, do you guys think that George is the Cleveland torso killer, and he was, like, traveling and doing that because his son, was under this impression like his son basically was like uh, he thought that his dad basically traveled around the United States and murdered and killed people for like science or I don't know what kind of doctor he was let me know in the comment box down below if you guys know what what kind of doctor George I think it was a dentist right was he a dentist but anyways either this torso Cleveland torso killer guy is a completely different person and then He's like a completely different person or he's really this George guy, the dentist guy. And, but definitely the way Black Dahlia died, you know, Elizabeth Short, is almost identical to the way these bodies were found. The only difference is that her head was attached, but she was cut in half and her, she was drained of her blood. And I don't think that this George guy if he was just a regular dentist, would like know how to do that or why would he do that? So I think that either George, I know I keep repeating myself because this is like insane story. Either George is the torso kill killer, Cleveland torso killer, or the Cleveland torso killer made it up to California. Somehow, Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, was unlucky to meet this guy and she got chopped up and murdered. You know what I mean? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was crazy. When I was researching it, I was just like, like every other, every other day, they're like finding another body, another torso, another headless body, no blood, no head, no ding dong. Like, it's just insane. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. I have to figure out who I'm going to cover for tomorrow's video. And I think tomorrow's video, I think it's 
Thanksgiving. I'm going to try to make sure you guys have a video to watch for Thanksgiving. If you get bored and you want to watch a video, I'll make sure that you guys have a video. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all the new subscribers, all your comments, all your, all your engagements. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh, make sure to subscribe, share, like. Bye.